Barbie. I can be pseudonymous on the internet. Why should I want to be pseudonymous on the internet? Haven't you heard about the omnipresent surveillance state apparatus? Our every move is being tracked. If the IRS doesn't like the political views you express on the internet, you could be in for a lot of financial pain. Even if it's just some random person who doesn't like what you say, they might call a SWAT team to come to your house. It's called SWATing and it really happens. But isn't using a different name on the internet dishonest? No more dishonest than wearing clothes instead of walking around naked. And it's natural to wear different clothes for different activities. I still don't like it. Don't you care about loss of privacy? Don't you care about people being targeted for harassment because of their political or economic activities? Of course I care. That's why I attend protests. Don't be silly. Protests only get your name added to their lists. The best way to resist is to code like me. Do you have pseudonyms you use on the internet, Barbie? As the Grug said in his speech on OPSEC, a freedom fighter's guide to staying out of jail. Shut the fuck up. Let me guess. Your pseudonym is, Ken. Give me some credit. I'm not a fucking idiot. The last thing you should do is choose a pseudonym that has something to do with your life. It's contamination. As the Grug said, avoid contamination like the plague. How can I think of a pseudonym that has nothing to do with my life? There's a Python program called Idmas that will do this for you. Idmas? Yes, Idmas. As in, Mary Idmas. You come up with a master seed and Idmas generates as many identities as you want. It's based on Bitcoin's BIP32 for hierarchically deterministic wallets. At each node it generates a gender, a nationality, a birthday and a name. You can use this to develop an alternative mindset for this alt personality while you are online as this person. But won't people still know it's you because of your IP address? You have to take steps to mask your IP address. Tor is a popular choice. The Tales Live DVD makes it easy to use Tor. VPNs are also helpful, but you should take care that the operator of the VPN does not know who you are. As the Grug said, no one is going to go to jail for you. But don't VPNs cost money? You can pay in Bitcoin. Each of your identities can have their own Bitcoin addresses. Wait, my alt identities can have money? Yes, of course. Bitcoin is pseudonymous money, so it's perfect for this. It must generate Bitcoin private keys and addresses for each identity. It even generates three different sets of key address pairs. One set for cold storage and should never be online, one hot set that you can keep online for regular usage, and the warm set which is occasionally used online. So if I use an IDMAS created identity, mask my IP address and use Bitcoin for payments, is that enough? Nothing is ever enough when it comes to avoiding agents of tyranny. But it's a good start. There's a Bitname project underway that will hopefully go much further than IDMAS. And projects like this need help from good coders and deep thinkers, so feel free to join in and contribute. The things I'm explaining now are some basics for remaining safe on the internet. It's like what the Grug calls, the plumbing. Once you have the plumbing in place, you still have to be careful not to contaminate between your identities. You also need to be careful to avoid textual analysis that might reveal your underlying identity. If your identity is supposed to be American but you're really British, then you have to be careful to call a lift an elevator, not a lift. Remember, the point is that your activities should lead back to your IDMAS identity if your activities come under scrutiny. Your Edna's identity should not lead back to you. You can find a lot more information in Nagrug's talk. Or read Jolly Roger's security guide for beginners. You can find it on deep.web.com. Thanks Barbie.